How important is it that Theresa May gets a simple bill? Uh, very important. I, I think keeping it as clean as possible is really key here. There's so much uncertainty around Brexit. If this gets a complicated bill with bits attached about people in, in the UK, then we're going to have to talk about what happens with our people over in Europe. Keep it simple, get it done, and let's move on and talk about the negotiations. That's really interesting. So do you think UK assets are actually moving, not on the nexus uh, between hard and soft anymore, but between certainty and uncertainty. So for you, is it more important that it is a certain, as certain a process as it can be versus whether it's hard or soft in, in the end? Yes, I think so. And, and at the end of it, Theresa May's very good at this kind of very steady approach. She's talked about everything before she does it internally, and then she does it and sticks to it. And that's kind of what I want to see this year. Um, it's going to be a transition year towards Brexit. We're not going to get that much meat on the bone. But let's get the negotiations started. Let's see what happens about the bill <laughs> and if we can negotiate the trade at the same time. Those are the big sticking points for the market. It's when can we start the trade negotiations? When can we look forward to the structure of the UK economy post-Brexit? Um, there's a couple of different things that people say will unnerve UK assets. And one of those is, of course, any discussion about passporting or equivalents or, or a manoeuvre towards one way or the other. We started, Anna and I started the day looking at sterling, and there's a nice piece, what to expect from markets on the triggering of Article 50 uh, when she pulls the trigger. This is written by uh, Stefania Spazzazzi. Uh, and this is the chart that they use, 67.21, uh, euro sterling, down for the seventh day in a row, the longest losing streak since the middle of last year. The contention by most analysts is that Article 50 and at the beginning of a messy divorce is not at all fully reflected in the price. Agree or disagree? I don't think the whole process is fully reflected in the price, but that's just pure uncertainty. Until you get a sense of the impact on the economy and, and when it's going to happen, I think it's very difficult to fully price that in. But the risks are rising and volatility has been very low. Yes. So that, that's certainly not priced in. And typically, high volatility means weaker risk assets. So, you know, from that perspective, certainly not priced in. Um, but it feels there's a whole bunch of other stuff around here that's not just about Article 50. It's happening in a big news flow, flow week rather than in a vacuum. Is the cleaner short to be short cable rather than euro sterling? Because there's too many other protagonists, as it were, in mm. that argument. Is that, is that your base case? It's a, cleaner, it's a cleaner view on the UK. If you're, if you're short sterling euro, you're then taking a view around politics in Europe as well, which is a tough thing to do. Uh, you say it's, it, it, is a busy, it is a busy agenda. There's lots going on. Even just in the UK story, there are other things going on. Mm. Bank of England meets this week, for example. I was doing a great piece, uh, a profile of uh, Kirsten, uh, Kristen Forbes, who's now going to be leaving, of course, yes. Bank of England in June. Nice piece on the Bloomberg uh, profiling her and how she's this rebel voice against the Brexit consensus. I mean, there have been uh, some people asking when we're going to see a, a rate hike from the Bank of England, given the inflation pressures. Others suggesting, no, we continue to look through that. How on hold do you think the Bank of England is going to be throughout this whole process? So Mark Carney's focused an awful lot on uncertainty and I think that's interesting with Kirsten Forbes as well. He did a great paper on why uncertainty doesn't really matter <laughs> from an economic perspective and she's leaving so that's one voice gone. Mm. I think if the Bank of England could travel back in time we wouldn't have had the emergency cut but instead what's happening we're going to get to the end of the CBPS in April that's going to be a the natural corporate, uh, yeah, the corporate bond purchasing yeah. scheme yeah um, part of the alphabet soup we live in yes. and I think that will naturally slightly tighten conditions anyway so I think they'll be quite glad to see that um, he still thinks this is a temporary inflation boost rather than this rise of inflation that we're seeing around the world which I think is a bit more of a concern so if we get a rate rise I think we get it next year and it's the quarter point emergency cut taken back uh, it doesn't feel he does it this year while we're still going through the negotiations on Brexit as well. Mm. Let's just talk about those, those discussions. Boris Johnson was on the Peston show yesterday and they were talking about a hard Brexit and reverting to WTO. And you've referred to this a number of times, Anna. And his reflection to Robert Peston on the ITV show was, I don't think the consequences of no deal are by any means as apocalyptic as some people might pretend. It is not for me to discuss whether that is a sane statement or an insane statement. But this is data and this is the propensity or the recession risk in the UK. In the event after two years that we are a hard of hard Brexit, even though David Davis says that they would get a vote, uh, or certainly it's inconceivable to me that we wouldn't get a vote on the outcome, these risks rise. The closer you get to a harder of hard Brexit or uncertainty, these risks really do rise, don't they? Yes, they do. And it, it's not... 
Funnily enough, it's not about the trade side of that. In that industrial manufacturing mm. base in the UK, it's not a huge proportion of the economy. It's all about the services. It's all about the financial services and the city of London and what kind of deal gets done. But it's, it's also things like insurance contracts where you have to deliver a euro asset for a sterling, sterling person who's buying the insurance. How that works post. These negotiation points are going to be absolutely key for the next couple of years. So, yeah. As we get closer to 2019, the risks of a recession are rising, but it's also going to be depending what else is going on yes, in the world and economy. If, and if the financial services industry in the UK uh, is fearful of what could happen in Europe and then turns its attention to the United States, they have right to do so to try and yeah. forward that relationship. Mm. To yes. Sort of to pick up the slack. Actually. Absolutely. And, you know, Donald Trump seems to be very keen to cut red tape. Um, it, feels, it feels it's not really the best thing to just reduce regulation dramatically, but a little bit less would be quite nice. Okay. And I think the UK would appreciate it.